Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Howard Pinsky, Senior Design Evangelist here at Adobe. Hope you're all doing well on this Wednesday morning, afternoon, or evening. Today, we're going to be diving into the wonderful world of YouTube thumbnails. I'm going to show you how to use Photoshop and Firefly to design something eye-catching It'll hopefully drive some nice views over to your channel. Let me go ahead and hop over to my screen. I am currently in Photoshop with a pretty lonely looking document. 1920 by 1080 is the size you want to be working with for documents like this. Now, how do we fill this document? Well, let me hop over to my finder for a second. And over the years, I started on YouTube in 2000. 2006. It's been a long time. I'm getting old, but I've made lots and lots of thumbnails. These are just a very small handful, handful, handful of the ones that I've designed. But today we want to do something similar to this. You've probably all seen this face. Many of you are probably sick. Not this particular person, but you know, the, the shocked influencer face, you know, that one. We're going to generate one using Adobe Firefly. Why? I don't know. It catches people's attention, so we're going to run with it. We're also going to add some text and all sorts of fun things to kind of get you started with your thumbnails. But I would encourage you all to definitely explore and have some fun with your thumbnails. Make it your own. So what we're going to do is we're going to hop over to Safari, where I have Firefly open. And by the way, if you want a shorter version of what I'm going to be showing today, if you go over to my new YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at learn firefly. I have a video. It's actually the first video that I released on this channel on how to do exactly what you're about to see. So head over there afterwards and uh, check out some of the new videos that I have. All right, so firefly. Let's start with a text prompt. And for this, we're going to type out something like I do have it over here, close up of an influencer. I hate that word, by the way, but we're going to run with it with a surprised, if I can spell properly, expression, mouth wide, open, hands on side of face. We'll start with that and we're going to see what we get from this. It's a iterative process. So your first uh, outputs may not be exactly what you're looking for. It's also not going to be the exact aspect ratio you probably need, but we'll see what it gives us. All right, not too bad, but I definitely want to make some tweaks. First, I want to go over to the left, change the aspect ratio to something closer to what we're working with, which is in this case, widescreen 16 by nine. Now it's not going to generate automatically. We're going to have to dive back in and, and do that. I want to make sure I'm on photo. And then down below, I found that the hyper realistic effect is really great for portraits and things like that. Now, if we were to generate again, we're basically going to get the same images, but a wider aspect ratio. But what you might want in some cases is you may want to define the background. Maybe you just want, let's say, uh, on a solid, maybe gray, gray background, right? And that'll allow you to very easily extract the subject from your background in Photoshop or Adobe Express or whatever it might be, and then add some elements behind it. But in a second, we're going to add something a little bit different, right? So this looks decent. It's a little bit cropped. Now, definitely take a peek at the prompt, right? We have close up of an influencer with a su 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 surprised. That's the word. I'm surprised I can't even talk. Um, so close up is probably going to give you a, you know, a close up as you're seeing right here. Now, of course, if you had a very specific subject in mind, a man, a woman, uh, different skin tones, all sorts of things, you can definitely enter that inside of the prompt. But let's try maybe a neon office in the background. We're going to see what this gives us as we start getting a little bit more complex with our prompts. We can see some, you know, strange outputs from here and from time to time, but I think we're going to get something pretty decent. That's not too bad, right? And I think one of these could definitely work. Now, I would also encourage you to experiment with hyper-realistic on and off. So let's go ahead and turn this off just to see what the difference is, because sometimes using the hyper-realistic effect will give us a little bit over the top results, not necessarily in terms of the subject, but almost like the rendering of it. Actually, this one's pretty good. I love that jacket. That is a fancy jacket. 
The hands are a little bit blendy up here. So, you know, those are things we might be able to fix using uh, Photoshop. So I think what we're gonna do is this image here, even though this part bothers me, but we're gonna bring it to Photoshop and see what we can do. You can either download it to your computer or down here at the bottom, you can press this icon, copy a link if you wanna share it, copy the image, which I'm going to do in a second, or save it directly to your Creative Cloud libraries. But let me go ahead and copy the image. I don't know what I just said, but I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna hop over to Photoshop. I'm currently using the Photoshop beta, which you can find inside of your Creative Cloud desktop application. If you go over to apps, and then we have a bunch of betas right over here, you can download. The reason I'm using the beta is because the generative fill inside of the beta is the upgraded version. So image model three versus one inside of the public release. All right, I'm gonna paste this image in here. Now pasted it quite large. So I'm just going to transform, command and control T and drag it on down. Perfect. All right, so we have our initial image. Now, like I mentioned, the hands are a little bit funky. So what we can do here is let's try the lasso tool and just simply make a selection around this area here. Now down here, not too bad. Up here, it, it, it's blending, right? So I'm gonna hop into generative fill. Let me zoom out a little bit. I'm gonna leave the text field blank and simply press generate. And I'm giving Photoshop a little bit of freedom. We might have to go back and enter like fingers, for example, but let's see if Photoshop understands what's happening in this particular case and maybe it'll fix it. Maybe it won't, I don't know. I mean, it's not terrible. It gives us three, that one's not bad. I mean, that one's not great. Um, that one's not great either. This one's, uh, I mean, I don't know, right? So let's try just out of curiosity, just typing out something like fingers. If this one doesn't look any better, we're gonna leave it as is, and then we can always come back to it later. But let's see what happens. And um, it's always fun with AI, right? Now it's not great. I mean, that one's not bad. This one's not bad either. There's something going on back here, but you get the idea, right? You can either regenerate inside of Firefly to get something a little bit better, or you can use generative fill and experiment. But I don't wanna to waste too much time. I do want to do a few things. First thing I wanna do, I like the background. I wanna keep the background, but I might wanna put some text behind this person, right? So what we can do first is we're gonna extract the subject from the background, but we're also gonna be keeping the background. Confusing, isn't it? Yes. So what, what I wanna do is I wanna select the subject. now. We do have an option down here on the taskbar to select a subject. We also can remove the background very quickly. What I prefer is to go over to the left, grab the object selection tool and select the subject this way. Now you're probably wondering why, what's the difference? Algorithms, that's the difference, right? You can also use something like the quick selection tool. Maybe I'll make the brush bigger with my right square bracket key and just paint over the areas that I missed. I have found personally that the object selection tool, for whatever reason, I don't understand the algorithms behind all this stuff, results in better outputs. Now, you can also combine this with select and mask, right? So I can dive in here. Now, even though we're gonna be keeping the background, um, we can you know, shift the edge a little bit inwards. Maybe we can paint around the hair just to refine that a little bit, something like that. We could decontaminate colors, I'm gonna leave that off because sometimes it adds a bit of a halo around on the layer mask, which I don't want. So I'm gonna press, actually, you know what? Whoops, I shifted the edge way too much there. I'm going to output as a layer mask and press okay. Now that's gonna give us a layer mask in addition to our original layer, right? So I'm gonna duplicate this layer. Command and control J, why J, I don't know. And on this one back here, I'm simply going to either disable or delete the layer mask. Now, it looks like the exact same image, right? It is, but we now have this other subject on top, which is gonna be crucial when we wanna add text behind it, right? Now, speaking of text, if I grab my text tool over to the left, I can hover and click, and I'll just write in this case, hello, right? Not very exciting. I can transform this up. And now we have to start thinking about the actual font and the styling, right? Now keep in mind, on a YouTube thumbnail, most of them are not viewed at this size. They're viewed 
probably something like this. So using a very stylistic typeface and a very small font is gonna be difficult to read. So what I wanna do, I wanna use a font that I found on Adobe Fonts called, oops, if I spell properly, Mighty Slab. Now, if you don't have these fancy fonts, head on over to fonts.adobe.com and you can browse fonts directly on this website. And here we go. You can sort by things like funky and art deco and all sorts of different things. Or if you know a font in particular, like Mighty Slab, you can dive in there. Now, what's really cool about this particular typeface is it comes with a few different options for really popping that font, right? So you can have almost like shadows and at three dimension with it. And let me show you how that's done. So if I hop back over here and maybe for the top layer, I might want it to be a bright yellow. You see that a lot on YouTube thumbnails. But if I were to simply keep it as a bright yellow text, you're gonna notice there's a lot of accessibility problems. Like here is not terrible, but over here, very difficult to read. So what we wanna do is we want to add some additional separation. Now, because of the way this typeface works, I can simply duplicate Command and Control J and then switch over to let's say two. And this will allow me to add an outline. So let's go for maybe a nice red outline. Now, you're probably wondering, okay, but that's covering everything up. And that's because it works in layers. And right now this layer is on top. So it's kind of blocking everything. So inside of your layers panel, whoop, drop it down. And now we have our nice red text separating our yellow. Maybe I'll just drop it a little bit. There we go, right? So now if I select both of these, holding down shift and clicking, you notice accessibility is much better at this point. Or we're not done yet, right? Maybe we want a nice shadow in the back. So if I duplicate this back layer one more time, Command and Control J, and then the one in the back, I might want to change this to, let's try three or four. We'll see, right? You can already see it's adding some nice dimension. But if I drop the color, ooh, there we go. Now we're talking, right? We have this nice bold text that's really popping from this image. And if I select all three of these, maybe I'll group it to keep my layers organized, Command and Control G and I'll call this header. And now what I can do is I can move it into place. But because we went ahead and extracted our subject from the background, we can move it behind the subject. Whoop, whoop. There we go. And I can rotate it. Now I'm noticing the extraction's not the greatest in some areas. It's not too bad here, right? But if I move it up here, the hair is a little bit of a challenge, but the nice thing is we have a layer mask. So I can dive into that layer mask Use a brush, for example. If you're not familiar with layer masks, anything black will be hidden. Everything white will be visible. So I can paint with white just to get a little bit more crispiness of the hair. Just like that. And now we have this nice extraction going on. Of course, if you spent a little bit more time than I have, you would get an even better um, extraction, right? So we have hello. Obviously, you would probably put something else for your header, but I'm gonna duplicate this entire group. And now I can dive in here and what should the second line be? I don't know. Maybe I'll just put you, right? In all caps, why not? So I'm gonna just dive into each layer and let me hide this for a second. You and you. I thought, would I spell that right? I don't, I have no idea. I thought at some point, if you had a text layer selected and you used the enter key on your keyboard, it would allow you to dive in and edit that text. Maybe, maybe I have an option turned off. Try it on your, your end. Maybe, does this work? No, I don't know. Or maybe it's broken. Who knows, right? So I have these two text layers, but I, what I might want to do is, if I select the right one, is, you know, distinguish between the two. So I might want to make some changes. So maybe on this one here, I'm going to basically swap the colors. So I might want, instead of yellow for the main color, I might want red. And then on the second one, I might want the yellow. So I'm just using my eyedropper. And then I'll probably keep that darker color in the background. And now I can just kind of position it where I want to. Something like that. Maybe I'll make it a little bit larger. I just transform it with Command and Control T. Just like that. And now we have the start of our YouTube thumbnail. And as you 
probably know if you browse YouTube or watch YouTube videos, the first impression sometimes sells a video. So if you have these this big text with bold colors and you know an eye-catching image in the middle, that's really all you need to start the process of getting people to watch your videos. Of course, you can sprinkle other things around, but definitely keep in mind that thumbnails are often viewed very small. So if you have a tiny little logo up here or you have some tiny text, it probably won't be seen. The subject, bold text. You really wanna focus on that for your thumbnails. And of course you can use Firefly to generate some fun images if you don't have any of your own or if you hop on Adobe stock and you can't find anything in particular to license, definitely generate some. But anyways, that's gonna wrap things up for today. Hope you all enjoyed this. Definitely have some fun with your thumbnails, make them your own, and I will see you all next time.